Having previously looked at how we can take two perpendicular vectors and combine them to work out one overall equivalent vector, we're now going to pretty much do the opposite thing. So we're going to take one vector, some magnitude acting in some direction, and we're going to work out two perpendicular, what are known as components. So we're going to break it down into horizontal and vertical components of that vector. So let's have a look at coming up with something like, uh, let's go for a force. And just for a semi-round number, let's take this force to have a magnitude of 5 newtons. Uh, so that's the magnitude. We also need to describe a direction since it is a vector and we'll have it acting 30 degrees above the horizontal. And then we're going to find the vertical and horizontal components of this 5 Newton force. That is to say, in the same way that we took two perpendicular vectors and we were able to find one overall force that was equivalent, we can take this 5 Newton force and we can break it down into a vertical force and a horizontal force that together are equivalent to this 5 newton force. Now the benefit of this is because this vertical and horizontal force are perpendicular, we can treat them independently. So when we get into doing force calculations or projectile calculation, once we've worked out all the vertical components of anything, we can crunch all our numbers on them and they have no effect on the horizontal components. Similarly, the horizontal components, we can look at them and we can crunch all our numbers on them and they have no effect at all on the vertical components. Sometimes a little bit hard to believe before you've seen it, but these two perpendicular components, the vertical and the horizontal components, are completely independent. So by breaking this force apart into vertical and horizontal components, we've taken one 2D problem and broke it down into two one-dimensional problems, and that tends to be a lot easier to work with. So, if this had been a force that was made up of two forces, uh, so a, a force at 30 degrees above the horizontal that had been made up of a horizontal and a vertical force, then those two forces would look like a horizontal force coming along like this, and then a vertical force coming up like this. And we can see we're back into our right angle triangle. Now because these force triangles are always to scale, all we need to do to work out the magnitude of this horizontal force is to work out the length of this line. And to work out the magnitude of this vertical force, we just need to find out the length of that line. So if we take this 30 degrees, we can label up this triangle. Over on this side, we've got our opposite side, we've got our adjacent down here, and we've got our hypotenuse up here. So now, we just need to use a little bit of trigonometry, so our Sokotoa, our sine, our cos, and our tan, we'll work out which one of those we need to use, plug in some numbers, and we'll be able to find out these values. So, let's start with our adjacent. We know the angle and we know the hypotenuse. So our Sokotoa, if we write this up so we can refer it back to it, if we've got our angle and we've got our hypotenuse and we want to know our adjacent, then we're going to go for this one. So the cosine of our angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Now our hypotenuse is the 5 newtons, and our adjacent is the side that we want to know. So we need to rearrange this to make the adjacent our subject, and then we can substitute in the values. So our adjacent is equal to h, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of our angle. We substitute in the values for our hypotenuse, the 5 newton force, and our theta, our 30 degree angle, 
and that gives us a value of 4.33 newtons. So the horizontal component of this 5 newton force acting at 30 degrees above the horizontal is 4.33 newtons. Now we've done that, we can work out the vertical component. So this time it's the opposite, and so we're going to be using uh, the sine function, as we can see, has been highlighted up here. So this time, after we've rearranged it, just as we did up here, we will end up with the opposite side, our vertical, is h sine of our theta. And so 5 times the sine of our 30 degrees, which nicely comes out as exactly 2.5 newtons. So the, this method allows us to find the vertical and the horizontal components of this force uh, so that they can be treated separately, breaking down a question into simpler parts, more bite-sized chunks. Now, we may have noticed that up here we've got our 4.33 newtons acting horizontally and our 2.5 newtons acting vertically. And when we combine those, we definitely get a bit more than 5 newtons. We get more like uh, 6 and a half to seven newtons in total. So it might seem that we've managed to get more force by breaking it down. But if you wanted to do a check, you could combine these two using Pythagoras, just like we did when we were combining perpendicular vectors. And if you combine these two using Pythagoras, you will get back to the five newtons, barring any rounding errors. And I'll leave that for you to check if you see that.